Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another awesome day here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Today is an educational day and we have Doyle Watson here Sorry. from Stewart. Uh, Doyle's, hold on, Doyle Watson's Dynamic and Stewart Glass. Did I get it right? That's a, that's a mouthful. <laughs> it's a yeah, mouthful. That's it. We're going to teach you guys today how to replace a windshield in an F-250 pickup. This could serve for a replacement for a windshield for pretty much any automobile, right? Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We're going to learn from the pros and we're also going to talk to you a little bit about why you would hire a local guy, a local pro, versus a national company. So let's get busy and get rocking. Doyle, you've been at this for how many years? Well, we've been in business since 1984. So. 1984, so yeah. Older than the truck. <laughs> let's a get long busy. Time. Yeah. Awesome. I ain't afraid to work. I ain't afraid to play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life. Times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. Show us what you do to get started. Well, we'll take the wipers off, and this is not really the wiper removing tool, but we'll try to use it pull the little key up. Gotcha, so easy enough, there's a little key right down here in the wiper, and he just slides that up and some, pops them right some off. Some work that way, some don't, but this one, old school forge is pretty simple, that's straight a pretty forward. good feature. I sort of like that, it makes life easy. You just have to rock oh, yeah. it a little bit, it's been on there a while. Now this truck had a visor on the top, guys, and the visor is sitting up on the roof right now. It was mounted up with some screws, <coughs> basically, and it hung right out over the windshield. We had to get that out of the way and clean up before we got started. Now what you doing, Dole? So we're going to take the, this has removable chrome where most modern day cars now have a mold and it's made on it. Uh, a lot of those are called encapsulated if you have one that's got a, you know, a rubber mold. And a lot of them now don't have anything on them. They're just you know, bare around the edges. But these have the old school chrome and you just have to get the little, you have to get, see the little tool and yeah. you get in there, catch the chrome clips and gently, and of course, you know, they, sometimes they pop right off and sometimes they don't. Yep. When we were talking, this truck's had a windshield replacement before. Can, you could tell, it wasn't a Ford Glass in it. Not original. That being said, when you replace a windshield that's been replaced before, sometimes you never know what you might run up on. You In other never words, know. they might have glued the, uh, improperly glued the trim down right here. And of course, all the trash, twigs, etc., get under there, so you can't get to what you need to. So as you're doing this, tell me about why you'd want to go with the local guy versus using the national company to have your windshield installed. Well, I think when you when you have local guys, you can. Uh, I think you get better service. I mean, I've been doing this for 30 years, and I think a lot of these. I've talked to some of the folks at some of the national company I know people that you know that work there and whatever and they have a lot of turnover with employees I mean you know do you want a guy doing surgery on you that's been doing it for six months or a guy that's been doing it for 30 years so that's it that's yep. experience really I really don't think it's a substitute for experience since we're working on the debris we'll continue on Guys, what Doyle's saying here is this debris up underneath here really is restrictive when it comes to trying to get that tool down in there. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to get it in there with all the garbage. Up. All the years of it goes somewhere, and that's where it all that's where it lands. So there's no real special trick to it. You just gotta you, work your way up underneath you, it. Yeah, you just have to get under there and. Pop it off the clip. You just have to re get it to release, and these little clips are, when I get it out, you'll see how they're made. Yep. You can if see, you'll see those clips here. 
Oh, and a clip there. Each yeah. one. Okay, so that's what it looks like up underneath. Gotcha. And now you see what I was talking about, the debris. Oh, yeah, we'll you get notice. the shot back on that. We got a ton of that. So. These are the upper clips, and they're just a little bit different, guys. So pops off a little bit easier on those upper clips. And some of the clips even like to pop off, as you can see that They one. do that. Yep. So what you got there? This is the uh, blade that goes in the equalizer tool that we'll use to cut it out. Okay. Um, Pretty cut that's your equalizer tool. Yeah, it's not very pretty, uh, and that's not because of equalizer, but I had a guy ask me the other day, he's like, man, you need a new saw? And I was like, man, this one's pretty new. Well, why is it taped up and bandaged up? And I said, well, when I have to save a windshield, this piece here is metal, uh -huh. and I cover it in tape so it won't bang it up scratch up the new the glass I'm trying to save. Before we cut it out, we're going to spray it with a so basically mostly water with just a drop of uh, just regular soap in it. Dish soap or whatever? Just, yeah, just to, it will not cut dry. And that's that. Guys, as nice as we knew this truck was really nice. No rust, no issues. Anything around the glass right here really looks great. You just have to be careful because this will do damage. And usually it cuts off pretty good. Guys, we were just discussing this. If you had to replace anything in the dashboard on this truck, like the heater core or something like that, this is the time to do it, absolutely. Even if you gotta pay a little bit extra, have your glass guy come back out, if you've gotta get that dashboard out and you gotta do some work in there, it's a whole lot easier to do it without the glass in place. Little pro tip. So what's this thing right here? That's a those suction those, cup. Yeah, those are the handles. Gotcha, make it easier to handle. It works better with handles on it for sure. We just want to get all the oils and stuff where you handle glass, it gets, we want to get all that residue off. And I just use regular old paper towels and rub away. All right, so you're using a primer. What is that called? Beta prime. Beta prime. And that supposedly penetrates down into the metal almost? It basically, once it dries, it, it it adheres to the the metal and of course what primer's left behind and gives you a good surface for for the um, urethane adhesive to stick to. You just paint that on. You want to be careful and try not to drip it, obviously, because it sticks pretty well to whatever you put it on. So the next step, guys, is priming the glass also. So we'll go around the outside edge of the glass and prime it. This is primerless glass, so it's not required, but it's kind of going the extra mile. That's what you get with a mom and pop shop like this. Next, we're gonna be putting in some Beta Seal U428 Plus sealant. So this is a Milwaukee caulk gun. The best. The best of the best. Gotcha, we've done a lot of Milwaukee stuff here lately. And let's see the pro bead you run across this thing. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see um, per, since I'm starting with a piece of tube, you notice it's a half yep. plunger, so we'll just start at the bottom and we'll see how steady my hand is today. Here we go. How much coffee did he have this morning? It's oh, all it wore out. off. Oh, yeah, it comes out nice, huh? Is there a reason for doing the bottom first and then working your way up to the top? Uh, no, actually, I usually start at the top. Gotcha. But since I was starting with a partial cube, if I can reach, I like to do the top in one continuous run instead of having to seam it. Gotcha. Where I seam the bottom, where it's not a big deal because the water really doesn't run uphill for the most part. So I like to do the, the top as I'm gonna to try to stretch across it and reach it, so I may look a little funky hanging up there, but yeah. we're gonna to try to make the stretch if I can. 
So his goal is to do one continuous bead all the way across the top right here so we don't get any leaks. Now, know, typically you're not gonna have water mm -hmm. going back up underneath on the bottom, but the top is very, very important. So we got our glue in place. This is called a set block, guys. This sets the windshield up off of the metal here and off of these brackets right here. Now, this is missing a piece, but Ford used to make a set block that was adjustable. Uh, when the windshield was replaced by the last person, that set block got damaged or destroyed. But that's what that is. It sets it up off of the sheet metal right here. These are handmade, handcrafted set yes. blocks. Custom. Nice. Custom. Custom made. So there's a point where you really want somebody to talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> sure, always. Set it on that point we yeah, just showed you guys. We're gonna try to catch the block and we're gonna gently place it. And if we need to raise it, we can add one of my custom made blocks gotcha. to wedge it up just a little bit as needed. So how do you know if you're centered? Is this an eyeball thing or are yeah. there certain set marks on the glass? Just pretty much eyeing it where it goes. When I ran the glue, we got a little wide there. But you just, you can rake it a little bit and how it's long, pretty pliable. How long does it take the glue to dry here? This glue here, the driveway time on this is probably about four hours. Okay. Uh, before you really want to operate the vehicle. And it all works pretty good for old school technology, but some things is always work good and they should leave them alone. Well, don't. Thanks for teaching. Yes, sir. I don't know, 20, 30, 50, 100,000 people how to put a windshield I in. I hope it was entertaining anyway. Yeah, it ain't everybody that'll teach you what they do for a living. So guys, the windshield looks great. Thanks so much for coming up here, man. Thanks for, again, taking the time that, to teach. Thanks for having and, us. And coming up here. So Appreciate you're my glass guy from now on. All right. From now meal. on. So it's good, guys. Thanks a lot for joining us here on the Stony Ridge Farm. If you have any input, questions, comments, I'll post a link or your phone number. What do you want me to post? Phone uh, number? Yeah, you, either one. Okay, I'll post this phone number up there. If you guys are local, Mount Airy, Stewart, Virginia, Pilot Mountain, Pilot Mountain Martinsville, Virginia, Hillsville, Hillsville, Hillsville yeah, all I go, over. I go everywhere. So, Southwest yeah. Virginia, North Central North Carolina. Yeah, you can find me on Facebook. We're, we're on Facebook also. So. Awesome. Cool. I'll post a link to that too. Guys, thanks a lot for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. We do one thing before we leave. Woo! Oh, what, Ric Flair? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life here in Sweden. Is it Doyle or Doyle or Doyle? It depends on how far past the Mason-Dixon Mason line you go. It's uh, <laughs> up north, it's Doyle, down here it's Doyle. I'm doing the Doyle, 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 Doyle again here. Woo! Oh, what, Ric Flair? Yeah. Woo! Was it pro? He's got stage presence. Yeah, I'm, I've been on stage a time or two, so it, <laughs> it works.